All right, one of the biggest discussions, the most argued topics that I see down in the comments is Lowe's versus Home Depot. Uh, who's gonna win? Who's better? Who's better for pros? Who's better for homeowners? Who has better customer service? Who has better employees? You know, at the end of the day, I always look at who's steering the ship. So we're gonna look at the CEOs, the guys in charge. That's right, it's CEO fight night here in the den. Home Depot versus Lowe's, let's jump into it. So we got a little tool hardware drama here because the CEO at Lowe's, Marvin Ellison. Now, first of all, he's starting in the hole with a name like Marvin. I'm sorry, but just look at that face. Anyway, you know he got picked on in school. Point is that Marvin here, he's got beef with Home Depot. And he said he's going to eat their lunch. He's going to steal the pro market. He's going to get a bunch of their exclusive deals. And he's going to get Lowe's back up on number one. All right. And now here's, let's talk about Marvin's background real quick so we can see where he's coming from. So Marvin went to the University of Memphis there, got his bachelor's degree there, went on and started working at all places Target. He started as a security person at Target. That's, that's an interesting place to start, but he's been in retail ever since. And he worked his way up from there, get this, to the director level kind of status over there at, at Target. So this man started at the bottom, I think it was $4.35 an hour, which granted back in the day, that was a little bit above minimum wage. I think minimum wage back then was like two seventy-five, three bucks an hour. So he was, he was starting not at the base level, but he wasn't starting at like senior management or anything like that. Okay. The man worked his way up. All right. All he was there for 15 years. He, he did his time. All right. Then he goes and he says, you know what? I'm going to get my MBA. And he goes over to Emory, uh, Gazetta, Goizetta, Gaz I don't know the how to pronounce this, Gazetta. Anyway, this is, it, it, they're a top 20, 25 there kind of uh, school for when it comes to MBA programs. They're not the most elite, but they are known in the industry and they do have a good program. All right, so he comes out of there with an MBA and he goes straight into management over at Home Depot. Don't even get me started why all these fools walk around in the in the orange aprons. Clearly, you you took your jacket off, pulled off your tie. I mean, look at this that 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 apron. Does that really go with the thousand dollar pants there, Marvin? And the poor saps behind them all walk along straight from corporate. You know, there's a room in the back that's just piled with like you know designer high-end you know hand-cut jackets and ties, silk ties and stuff as they're walking around cosplaying as associates. I, I'm sorry, I, I get a little worked up about the whole like the, the putting on the apron and looking like just one of the guys kind of thing. Anyway, that aside. Uh, so he works his way up at Home Depot and he does a really good job of it. He works his way all the way up to number two. All right. He becomes the uh, he, like he wins a bunch of awards. He, his stores are always number one. He works his way up to the number two slot over there. Well, guess what? The the, the man, Frank uh, Blake, I believe it was, this was the guy who turned Home Depot around. He was uh, uh, one of the best CEOs they had. Uh, he came in, I mean, talking about the probably voted the number one guy most uncomfortable in an apron. And yet he really did understand how to make a better work environment, how to get people to work harder and want to work, made a great place to work and made good money for Home Depot. But at some, at some point, everyone's got to retire, right? So Blake steps down and everyone assumes that Ellison, the number two guy, is going to get the spot. But they pass him over. They do. It is it, it not pretty. They pass him over for Craig here. Craig comes in. He, he came from a similar kind of background uh, as the, the former CEO. And uh, he slides right into that spot. And uh, needless to say, nothing, nothing will make you a little bit more irked about the workplace than, than making your way to number two and then getting passed over for that number one spot. So, uh, so Marvin, he's not going to stick around. He jumps ship and he goes over to, of all places, J.C. Penney. Now, why did he go to J.C. Penney? Why didn't he go someplace more in line with the kind of stuff that he's done? Well, the case is he had a non-compete clause. All right, and I think it was a three-year non-compete clause with Home Depot. So when he left, he, uh, he, he took his stock options, everything with him, and went over to J.C. Penney's. Did not have a great time. And a lot of people blame him for doing a bad job over at J.C. Penney's. And 
you could be right. You could, but it's so, but J.C. Penney's was in such bad shape. I don't know if anyone could have really pulled them, turned them around from where they were. I think, I think that train was locked, loaded, and it was somebody broke off the throttle, and it was just going to go off, off that 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 uh, that bridge. I don't think there was anybody who could stop it. Maybe some wonder could, wonder kid, wonder kid. There we go, wonder kid, uh, could could figure it out. But it wasn't Marvin, and uh, it didn't do well. And a few years later. Uh, Marvin bails ship again and heads over to Lowe's. Now, this was kind of a no-brainer and kind of where everyone thought he was going to end up anyway. It really felt like he just did his three years somewhere else so he could get out. Now, in the other corner, we've got Ted Decker. Now, uh, Craig has since stepped down. He stepped down after the whole pandemic thing. Uh, there were some questions about his management. Some of it was good, some of it not so good. Anyway, Ted has stepped in, and he's been running Home Depot like like a clock. It has been doing well. He's allegedly anyway. We we talk about what he's better at and what he's not good at. But the point of the fact is, he's the number one guy there now. We're comp competing against. He went. He got his bachelor's at William and Mary, and then from there he went on to Carnegie Mellon. Now. In my day, Carnegie Mellon was considered one of the best of the best of the business schools. Uh, but when we look at current ratings, by at least by Fortune.com, Fortune Magazine rates uh, Carnegie Mellon. Let's come out here, starting at number 25 or 23 there. But, but we got uh, Goizeta, Emory University Goizeta at number 20, and Carnegie Mellon, the Tepper School, at number 19. Now, if you're wondering who the top schools are, um, I, you know, you're going to come up here and you're going to see all the big ones you're used to. Columbia, they're a big name. Northwestern, they're a big one. Yale. University of Pennsylvania Wharton School, that's a huge school for business. Stanford and Harvard, of course, are going to be up there as well. All right, now, comparable here, comparably.com. They've got a nice little comparison between the two guys here. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit here to get a, a better view of this. So they're giving Marvin a D plus rating. Well, Ted's rocking a solid B here, 74 out of 100. And let's see what they're what they're gauging it based off. Now, most of this is feedback from people who currently work there. All right. So if they look at women at Lowe's, how they rate Marvin as a leader, they're giving him the D plus. Uh, women at Home Depot are giving them the A plus. That's the gender score, the diversity score. This is kind of funny. Now, normally I don't care about DEI and all that kind of stuff, but Marvin, being a DEI kind of person himself, is getting a C minus, whereas Ted Decker's getting a B. <laughs> that hurts when you you're one of the DEI uh, you know you know people that they're looking at, and you you can only pull off the C minus. Do you approve of your CEO's management style? Only 38% over at Lowe's approve of it, whereas 72 at Home Depot do. Now, one of the things we're going to look at here real quick is we're going to look at the stock because I think this is kind of telling here because it, it's really kind of funny. As bad or as good as all these things are, it, it's almost like it doesn't matter who's steering the ship because you look at Lowe's here. There, well, that's one day. Let's look at five years on Lowe's. And we come up here. We start at 114. They're at 250, a little over doubled in value over the last five years. And then if we go over to Home Depot and we look at the five-year uh, plot on them, you're looking at 182 to 384. Similar kind of growth, although I will say Home Depot does look like it's a little more raggedy back and forth than a slightly smoother line there with Lowe's, kind of maybe steering the ship a little bit more accurately. Now, you can say, well, the stock prices, you know, Home Depot's got a higher stock price. Well, they started with a higher stock price. They started with a higher market cap. They're a little bit, they're right about double the market cap of Lowe's. So, uh, I can say this, Marvin hasn't gained any, any traction on him, but he does seem to make things a little bit smoother. At least that's what investors are looking at. All right, now, let's look at Lowe's on Reddit. Okay, so... Reddit, there's a couple great communities on Reddit, and, and you gotta read them. They're they're hilarious. They're, so there's a R slash Lowe's and R slash Home Depot, and these are mostly people who work there, griping about the daily grind, uh, what it's like working at the big box stores. And here's I think where it's kind of telling and shows 
that you know the other numbers we looked at aren't exactly wrong. If we go through the stuff over at Lowe's, the um, Marvin Ellison's not a good business person. Open letter to Marvin Ellison. Uh, what should I tell Marvin? There's a lot of this stuff. You go to Home Depot and the, don't get me wrong, there's plenty of people griefing about working at Home Depot and they don't appreciate me and we need to unionize. And But it's the, con, it's the same kind of stuff you find anywhere. Unhappy workers thinking they should get paid more. But what you don't see is you don't see them blaming Ted the same way they directly blame Marvin. There's a lot of people screaming at Marvin over in the Lowe's group. Whereas Ted, I mean, there's people who like, hey, Ted, we should get paid more, but they're not really taking it to him personally the way they are with Marvin. So let's talk about though what Marvin has done since he got in there. Here's some of the press releases from Lowe's. Lowe's to launch exclusive partnership with Ego. Ego used to be a major brand over at Home Depot and Home Depot let them slide out the back door. That was a big coup for Lowe's, all right? Next up, we got Lowe's to launch the, the Flex line, okay? A lot of people can complain about the Flex line. You can say what you will, but this they proved to be a major player, okay? they they Sure, they had some cheesy advertising and they've had the issue with the leaky battery tar stuff. It, it, it's, I mean, it's annoying and it's kind of nasty, but it's not like it's really part of the battery. It's part of the liner kind of thing leaking out. And they're fixing that because they've got a, oh, I don't know, a lifetime warranty in all the tools. So getting that, landing that, making that another real top tier powerhouse there, professional grade tool for Lowe's, that's another big win. What did Home Depot get? They're just still with TTI. In fact, they're with TTI on a lot of things. How about this, Toro. Not only did Lowe's get Ego, they've got a strategic partnership with Toro. Lowe's also signs up with Petco to bring, I don't know if you've been into Lowe's store recently, but they've got a section now that's all pets and stuff. And it looks like a little mini Petco in there. And it's kind of cool. You know what else they got in there? They've got a mini tractor supply in there now. They're doing farm and ranch. You'll see like t-shirts, John Deere, that kind of stuff. All the kind of stuff I see at my local farm and ranch store. Not all of it, but a, a, a nice little portion of it. So they got their little pet section, right? At least my local one. I walk in the door, I turn to the right. We got pet section, we got farm and ranch, and then we go on to all the regular stuff. It's a nice, you know, diversification of the products that they carry. Um, how about this? Uh, Home Depot kicked out a couple American brands. Uh, Klein is gone. Estwing is gone. If you want those, you got to go over to Lowe's. All right. You might still find them at some Home Depots, but they're whittling down. And guess what they're replacing them with? Made in China, made in Taiwan, TTI tools. Um, and then we can look at the leadership here. Uh, again, with, with the... So they don't have the aprons over at Lowe's, but they do have the, the red smocks. Although uh, apparently if you're ex-military, you get the camo smock. <laughs> I guess it's a benefit. Anyway, I was thinking about, and, and, and to be fair, Home Depot does the same thing. Talk about people who do look uncomfortable wearing average working day kind of wear. I mean, like you couldn't get out of the Oxford button down shirt for the photo. You couldn't throw on like a basic t-shirt or something. Oh my gosh. How about this? Richard, their chief financial officer, does he not look like he's about to sell you a used Ford? For, for a bargain, baby, I will get you on the road in this thing today. Anyway, I, I could probably do a whole segment on just going through and ripping on these folks and, and their uh, faux uh, everyday working man kind of outfits and their, while wearing their $1,000, uh, you know, custom fit pants and slacks and such. Anyway, hey, if you want to see a video on that, let me know down in the comments. If, if this video gets... Uh, over 100 likes. Maybe I'll do that. How about that one? Anyway, there you go. Let me know what you think about the comparison. Now, I'm going to tell you to hold on just a second here because here's what I found. I've had a chance to move around the country a few times since I started this, doing this whole YouTube thing eight years ago. And the thing I noticed is it really depends on where you are. Each store can really be different uh, when it comes to customer service. I've been to some low stores that are terrible, but my low, my, like in California, Home Depot was 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 great and Lowe's was terrible. I went to Vegas and it was flipped. The Home Depot was awful, but the Lowe's was fantastic. Up here in Montana, 
Well, we raise our kids right, so uh, both stores are fantastic. Uh, get great customer service at both. Uh, let me know what you're thinking, though. Put the customer service aside and look at what you see in store. Like, are you a pro? If you're a pro going into a store, which one has the most appeal for you? If you're a homeowner, I'm a homeowner, I'm not a pro anymore. When I go in store, I kind of like going to Lowe's because it seems like they got more, like, you know, home kind of, like, really, like, the stuff at Home Depot looks a little cheaper. The stuff at Lowe's looks like it was more designed for somebody who actually ho owns a home and wants to live there. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Anyway, that's all I got for you. Something different today. If you want to see more CEO fights, let me know who we should put up against each other. You all take care. God bless. And as always, shine on.